Hello, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live with Danica Joan and Wendy Perry. You'll see that we don't have a featured guest today because today's feature is all around Wendy's brand new uh, support community. So welcome. Welcome. Uh, Wendy, tell us more about your program that you've got going on. Thank you. This is kind of um, feels strange now because now I'm used to interviewing people with you and now you're going to interview me. But thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk about the new uh, community. So it is a members only parental alienation support community. And uh, do you want me to just tell you how I came up with the idea and, and what it involves? Yeah, well, you know, one thing I know about you is you've been doing support groups for, for years, what, like about a, a, at least a decade. I started uh, having face-to-face -face support group meetings in 2011, so it's been about nine years now, and the way that started was I was an alienated parent, and there were no support group meetings. And there was a huge need for it. And the more and more I realized that there were a lot of other people going through this, um, and I realized that we needed to have support group meetings, there weren't any, and so I started them. And we had, at our first meeting, I will never forget, we had someone who drove five hours each way. She drove five hours to get there, and she drove five hours home, and it was incredibly hot. It was one of those really horribly hot Texas days. And she told me she did not have air conditioning in her car. And, and I was shocked. And I said, I can't believe that you drove five hours to come to this meeting. It was our very first meeting. And you don't have air conditioning in your car. And she said, I, I would drive anywhere for a support group meeting. She said, I, there are no other support group meetings and I need this. And it just showed me how important it was to people, how much it was needed. And after that first meeting, we just kept having monthly meetings. We had them for many, many years. And our attendance grew and grew. And we had average between 20 to 40 people at each of our monthly meetings. It varied. Sometimes we had presenters come in and, and give presentations. And we always had a really big turnout for that. But it, it's, there's just something so uh, powerful about being in a room with people face to face and, and talking to them about parental alienation. And for a lot of people, it, it's the only time that they're in a room full of other people who understand what they're going through and who, who believe what they're saying. So it's very, it, it's very, um, very comforting and it's very empowering. And uh, the feedback that we always got was that people came out of the meetings feeling better than when they went in. You know, they felt comforted, they felt understood, and, and they felt like they had a family. You know, they had a good support system. And, and that's incredibly important when you're dealing with parental alienation. You know, that, that's a really huge point you were making about the fact that at the end of the meeting, people walked away feeling uplifted and comforted and <clears throat> because sometimes I mean that really takes a special leadership in that in not getting into the trenches of all of the the sewage of the conversation and because the thing is is a lot of times people will go to counselors and they you know they're just unloading and dumping and stuff like that and then they walk out and they're like gosh I feel horrible or they're having marriage counseling and then they leave and they're like oh I feel worse than when I came so I acknowledge you for that. That's, that's take something. Yeah. I mean, you know, of course it varies. Sometimes people would come in and, and they were having a really, really hard time. They were having a really, really bad day. And, you know, so sometimes, you know, I mean, sometimes people would leave, they're still sad, you know, but um, overall the, the feedback was always really positive. And, we always had it. We had a structure to our meetings, and I think that's very, very important uh, for anyone who might be considering, you know, hosting support group meetings. Um, I think it's really important to have a structure um, to follow. And so, what we did in, in our meetings was that 
half of the meeting was for support and so we gave everybody an opportunity to speak and you know to give and to receive support and because we had a big turnout you know 20 to 40 people is a lot so we had to set a time limit so that everybody got an opportunity to to talk but the other half of our meeting uh, was what we called action items so we talked about things like um, you know legislative reform and we talked about community events and we actually as a group we would go out into the community and do community projects not even always related to parental alienation but just to get out in the community um, to to create more awareness and education so we would we would go and volunteer at festivals and other events and we would wear our parental alienation awareness shirts and buttons um, so I think that community involvement was something that really helped grow our, our visibility, right? And then we ended up, actually we got uh, nominated for an award um, here in South Lake, Texas. We got uh, nominated as one of the nonprofits of the year um, in recognition for uh, making a positive difference in the community. So, you know, there's if you are really committed to having support group meetings, it, it can turn into so much more than just support for the people that are attending. I mean, you can really have a big outreach and, and really make a big impact on your community. I'm kind of going off on that a little bit, but I just think you asked me about how it started and when, and, and that's where it started. And, and it grew from that. And then I've helped other people around the world start support group meetings. You know, just I've given them the, the template that I use for my meetings, you know, the structure of it and giving them some ideas of how to how to let people know about their meetings. I mean, that's really important. Like if nobody knows about your meetings, they're not going to show up, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So we talk about that too. And then of course the limitations. And the thing is, is different kinds of venues serve different populations. There's not one that seems to be better than the other, but the, the Achilles heel, with these physical support groups are that people have to drive a long ways to get to them or it's not on the right time or time of the week yeah it's really challenging i mean there there is no way you could schedule a support group meeting so that every single person could come every time it's just impossible to do like with anything that you would schedule um and you know there is an organization um paso uh, parental alienation solutions organization and they are their mission is to have support group meetings all around the world and they're doing an amazing job I totally support them they are such a great organization um, I know the people you know behind the organization and they're they're just doing a, a fabulous job and they are super structured with their meetings as well um, but the reality is is that it there aren't meetings for everyone um, to have access to and it's really, really important for all alienated parents to have access to support group meetings. So that is one of the reasons that I created the members only parental alienation support community was that, you know, every day I get messages from people saying, can you tell me where support group meetings are? And, and I do have a list, but there's, there's just not, it's just not everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we know from Dr. Harmon's research, we had her on the show a few weeks ago. Um, we know her research shows that there are about 22 million parents affected by parental alienation in the United States. So, it, I mean, it's happening in every town, you know, everywhere across the country, around the world. And we just don't have meetings for everyone to, to get to in person yet. And, you know, there, there are a lot of limitations. There's transportation, uh, distance, things like that. But in general, this day and age, the one thing that people do have access to in some capacity, even in a public library, is the internet. Yeah, just <laughs> a click of a button and there you go, you know? And so so what, what really made me have this idea to have this members only community was, I'm an alienated parent. And so like other alienated parents, I'm in a lot of, online groups you know mostly on Facebook right but like social media groups and I've noticed more and more that uh, most of the groups have you know they've ended up with um, there's 
salespeople in there, you know, trying to sell you services. Mm -hmm. There, um, there's a lot of gender bashing, you know, people just, some people just can't seem to get it through their head that this is not a gender issue, you know, and so they, they, you know, are in there trying to, you know, create gender wars and gender division. And uh, there, there's a lot of negativity, you know, which is understandable, but, you know, there's a lot of um, people who are, they just focus more on, um, they, f they focus more on hating their ex and talking about how angry they are about the situation. And as an alienated parent, you know, I've got, I've got two large groups myself. So I've got an outreach of about 7,000 people with my groups. And, and even I deal with this, you know, I deal with people coming into my groups who are um, trying to sell things, they're antagonistic, you know, they, they are determined to have, you know, gender wars. And so, I mean, it's just really hard, you know, it's hard to vet people to make sure that they're there with good intentions. And a lot of people just want to focus on the negative. Like I said, they, you know, there's a lot of memes about, you know, how much you hate your ex or, you know, how horrible, you know, things are. And, and I was coming away from these groups, you know, I would go visit my groups and I would come away thinking, oh, it's just, it's just so negative. You know, it just wasn't something about it wasn't sitting really right with me, you know, and yeah. And I just want to say there are some really good groups out there, okay? So I'm not saying that, you know, all of these groups are horrible. I'm not saying that at all. And there are some really good groups out there and some really good administrators of the groups. And, and I know how hard it is to administrate and, um, you know, moderate a group like that. You know, I know that from my own. So I know it's a really hard job. Um, but I, I was like, I want more. Like, I want to go somewhere every day. I want to go somewhere every day that I know is positive, you know, more positive than negative. Mm -hmm. And where I know there's not going to be gender bashing. There's not going to be somebody in there who's just trying to pick a fight. Um, there's not going to be somebody trying to sell me stuff. You know, I just want to, I just want to know that I, that there's somewhere I can go that is going to be uplifting and that's more focused on like living your best life even though you're an alienated parent and it, it wasn't, it wasn't out there, you know, and I know as an alienated parent, I wanted that. I was craving that because I'm at a place in my life where I do want to live my best life. I want to be, I want to be happy, you know, and I want to focus on ways to be happy, even though I am an alienated parent. So that was one thing that was missing was that kind of discussion forum. And then, like we talked about before, the other thing that was missing was support group meetings. I thought, you know, every alienated parent needs access to a support group meeting, and, and it's not out there. It's just not, it's not, you know, it, it didn't yeah. exist. And then the other thing was um, educational presentations. You know, I go and I do educational presentations at conferences and for schools and, you know, at various events. And, and people will say, well, I want to come and see you, but I can't, I can't afford it or I can't travel. You know, there's a lot of reasons that people can't make it to conferences or, or that they can't host a conference. And I thought, okay, well, there's, that, there's another need. You know, people, they need and want to see relevant educational presentations with current up-to-date information. And so I thought, okay, we need this, we need this private, really private discussion forum where people are vetted you know, make sure they're yes. there with good intentions, right? Um, and that they're going to promote, you know, being positive and, and really being supporting, supportive of each other. There's a lot of judgment also out there. So I thought, okay, we need to have this um, private discussion forum that's positive, non-judgmental. Um, we need to have support group meetings and we need to have educational presentations. And then I thought, oh, why don't I just create this community where we have those things you know yeah. we didn't have it <laughs> and and yeah so that's that's what I did <laughs> I think that's awesome because you know you said something that really resonated with me about things that are uplifting mm -hmm. I think the both of us are are people who try to to see the good in the world and try to create emphasize the good in the world because um the alternative is not so nice <laughs> and 
the the thing is is I mean the fact of the matter is is there is no guarantee that you'll ever be able to have a reunited relationship with your alienated child. I mean, it would be great. Mm-hmm. I would love to make that promise and be able to like 100% guarantee someone would have a restored relationship, but it's just not the case. So doing the, what we're doing with the support groups and stuff like that, it, it, you're saying, okay, let's do a community service project. Let's create awareness, but also keep it in the positive and, and do something good for yourself, some self care and, and things like that. Um, I like that. Um, that really makes a difference. Well, um, I'm really glad you said that. And it's something that I think we don't talk about very often is that, um, no, you cannot control what other people do. So as much as we would like to, we cannot 100% guarantee um, anyone that, you know, that they're going to reunify with their child. I mean, if if we, if we could, I mean, that would be amazing. Um, And so this members only parental alienation support community, something that I want to point out is that it's not to replace um, a coach. Like if you have a co-parenting coach and you feel like they're, they're making your life better, they're helping you, then you should definitely keep doing your coaching. So it, it's not to replace anything that you already have that is helping you. This is just an additional resource for people. You know, it, it's, a, it's a community that they can go to every day and know that they're going to feel supported and not judged. And like I said, it's going to be more positive than negative. You know, it, it's going to be about, you know, what can I do to feel better today rather than focusing on all of, all of the negativity, you know, instead of focusing so much on, on the things you hate and how angry you are at people, what can I do? Because the only person I can really control is myself. So what can I do to live my best life even when I'm an alienated parent. So that's what it's all about. And, and, and you have to, if you want to have a community like this, that is truly private and you want to make sure that people are in with good intentions, they're in there for the right reasons. I mean, you have to go through a process to have it be a membership community, you know, like on, like on the Facebook groups, you know, there are, yes, there are some private and closed and secret groups and and you can set those groups up to ask questions like you know why do you want to join this group you know and and they answer you know and they give a good answer but you know I think that and you and I have, have discussed this before but when you have to even just invest a little bit it shows your seriousness like I really I really I'm investing in myself like I want to be a part of this you know, yes. and, and that's an important part of ensuring that this members only community is really community members who want to be there, you know, for the right reasons. Yeah, I, I agree. I know I've, I host a couple of pri- uh, closed Facebook groups and that's, there's always a process. Did they answer the question? And I don't just stop with, did they answer the question? I look on their Facebook page to see what kind of person they're, they, they like to post the thing, the things that they like to post. And if it's Mm -hmm. trying to sell lipstick and things like that, no, (laughs) we're not doing that. (laughs) That's not what it's there for. And it's, and, and, and you also have to be discriminating. And, and if you see that they're trying to promote, you know, starving children in Africa, that's a, that's a worthy cause, but Mm -hmm. not in this group. That's not the scope of the, of the groups that we're hosting. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, and also I just want, people watching to know that when I say it's more positive than negative, I mean, it's realistic, right? So um, in fact, a few days ago, one of our community members, um, she was struggling with something. And so she posted, you know, hey, I'm really struggling with this today. And, And she shared with us what her struggle was. And she said, you know, do you guys have any advice for me? You know, And so it's, we're not, I mean, we're real, you know, if a community member is having a hard day, you know, it's not like, oh, well, you can't talk about that because that's negative. I mean, no, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about is to really share your feelings 
and to know that you're not going to be judged, you're not going to be attacked, that you're really actually going to be, um, you know, met with support and compassion wherever you are in your journey. And that's something that I want to point out too, that I've been noticing more and more. And, and I totally understand this, but, um, you know, some parents are taking a much needed, you know, well-deserved break from trying to reunify with their, with their kids for various reasons. Um, and those parents, they get judged and attacked a lot. I've been seeing more and more of that. Mm -hmm. And it, it really, it really touched my heart a few weeks ago. I saw an exchange in a Facebook group, um, a mom that I know who she's she's a great person you know but right now there she's not trying to actively reunify um and and she really got attacked and, and it really affected me I, I i watched the exchange and, and i thought gosh that's just that's that's horrible you know because that's not what support is you know and and so that's something that is really important in our community is the no judgment, you know, if, if you're doing all you can to try to try to reunify, awesome. But if you're in a place where you are taking a break, because you need to, then that's okay, too. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna support you in that. So, and there are a few other benefits to the members only community. But, but those are really the main ones to have that really, you know, safe private discussion area. And uh, the t we have two support group meetings per month. Um, and then we have one presentation per month and um, it's, it's $19 per month to join the community. And, and I can tell you from hosting and attending support group meetings for many years, $19 a month is, it's a great deal just for the support group meetings alone. You know, most support group meetings um, are, I mean, they're in different places, but uh, we usually had ours in restaurants. And so you go and you buy a meal and, you know, that's, you know, $20 easily. And that was just for one meeting per month. But we're having two meetings per month. And it's just going really great. I mean, everybody is just um, being very, very supportive and very positive, very encouraging. And, uh, it, yeah, I really hope that people will want to join us. Well, I, you know, bringing up, okay, so that there's a fee involved. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I get that some people are just like, you know, you're making money off of our grief mm -hmm. and, and, and they're resentful and stuff like that. But sometimes people don't get the, the time you've invested and the cost of the technology. Yeah. Like, and, and the fact that is, is you can, um, if you're just for instance, if you're holding down a full-time job, so you're doing this in your spare time. Um, if you're, if a person were to, if you were to put it, you dedicate your 40 hours into this support group, um, that is such a benefit to everybody. You know, for you to not be doing a job that doesn't, that, that um, I guess being distracted by going and earning a living one way, now you're channeling everything into this support group. Not to get rich, but to basically, you know, um, cover the cost so mm -hmm. that you do what you do best. So yeah, I I mean I, I get what you're saying. Um, definitely. I mean there are some people who are like you should not charge anything for this. You know anything related to parental alienation should be totally free. Um, there are some people out there who believe that, and you know if you offer something that is you know really specialized and uh, takes a lot of time and you know, you've got some skills that are, you know, going into it, then I, I mean, I think that it's okay to charge for that, you know, and to your point, it's, it's very time consuming, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, mean, I mean, what we're doing here is it's, like I said, it's an online community that um, is, you know, closely monitored um, every day, and we go in and we have got communications every day, and we've got the two support group meetings per month. Um, those are going to be one to two hours each meeting, depending on how many people are in the meeting. Um, I do have to pay for the for the technology that we're using for those meetings, and um, doing one presentation per month. 
it's going to vary because we're going to have different presentations, but those presentations will probably be one to two hours. And um, so, yeah, I mean, there it, it's a lot. It's time and money spent to do this. Sure. And, uh, you know, and like I said, you, if you want to be a part of something like this, you want to be sure that the other people have got the same intentions as you. And, and so you've got to go through certain measures to make sure, you know, to, to have that, I don't know, to, to ensure that, you know, the culture of your community, I guess, is what I would say. Well, and the thing is, is the thing I get is it's not like you're eliminating the things you've been doing all along uh, for free, that you've been doing for no charge. Like we mm. offer this program, this broadcast, free of charge. We have several other groups that we manage and we moderate and, and uh, that are continuing to be free. So this is an addition, a, an additional opportunity for someone and actually for them to, to be able to interact with you. So like right now, you, we, can, we can interact with the people on the chat, but we can't really face-to-face -face interact with people in this particular format, but you will in mm -hmm. your support group. Yeah, I still have, I still have my two support groups um, that have got 6,000 people in them. One has got 5,000 and one has got 1,000. And um, I still have those. They're free. I still have my page, which has got over 1,000 followers. So that's free. And I mean, people message me all the time. And I message them back. And uh, I will still do some um, in-person face-to-face support group meetings um, throughout Texas. I will, I'll still do that for free. But um, I mean, th this support community is what I've been doing for almost 10 years and I've done it for free for 10 years <laughs> you know so I'm experienced I mean I, I know what I'm doing right I mean this is what I do and um but yeah I mean I've been it you know since you brought it up my husband and I we did the math the other day um because someone was giving me a hard time about charging <laughs> $19 a month and uh you know I've spent many thousands of dollars over the years, you know, to do this. Yeah. yeah flying uh, to conferences, <laughs> paying for your hotel, your airfare, mm -hmm. just to be of contribution to, to other people, people who are hurting. Um, right. Yeah. Right. I, I, I get it. I definitely. Yeah. It. But I mean, I, I think we, you know, like I said, $19, $19 a month to, to be able to attend two support group meetings per month. Mm -hmm. is it's a really really great deal but you know if, if you are really against it then it's just not for you you know that's okay yeah. that's all right that's yeah. okay you know it, it's not for everybody but out of the 7,000 people that I have a direct reach to I've only had two people you know give yeah. me a little bit of a little bit of a hard time about it so I think two people out of 7,000 is pretty good so I would yeah. suggest I would suggest to our viewers that that you know, if you do have any concerns and, and, and if it's somehow it hooks you, it triggers you about this in any way, whatever t um, part of our discussion, please just private message us both. Mm -hmm. And we, either one of us, we would have a conversation with you about it because we'd certainly rather uh, have, you know, be in communication with you than for someone to be disgruntled and silent. Yeah. And and you can't please everybody, no matter what you do, you know, I mean, you just can't. I know that from doing this for the last 10 years, you can't please everybody. You can't make everybody happy. Um, but, you know, I really do appreciate all of the people who have reached out to me and said, you know, we love this. And in particular, what they love is the opportunity to have an access to support group meetings that are, that are private for members only, because, you know, this is, we want to protect everyone's privacy that's very very important and when you have the groups online that are they've got five to six thousand people in them even if they are closed or you know secret or private when you've got that many people and it's incredibly hard to make sure that all six thousand people are legit um, something that I think that's important to point out is your your privacy is at risk um, and 
if you are in litigation, if you're going to family court, that's something you want to be really, really mindful of. And, yes. and we see that a lot, you know, where people have got an alienator who is stalking them and going into their groups with fake profiles and, you know, getting the things they post. So, you know, it's a lot of people really have told me they appreciate having um, a community that really is private and where they can have support group meetings. And so we, we are having a support group meeting actually this Saturday. All right. So I know, I know. I'm really excited about it. And uh, everybody in the community is really excited. And, and like I said, you know, I'm an alienated parent too. So I've got, you know, some things going on that I'm, I'm excited to give and receive support you know, and, and yes. we all need it. We all need it. So I, I really appreciate everybody who, who, like I said, has reached out to me and, and, you know, they're supporting this. So yeah, awesome. it's really awesome. good. It, you know, the need was out there. And so, and so here it is. And I hope that if people are interested in it, they will get in touch with me and, and I'm happy to share more information about it, but they can uh, learn more about it on my website, which is wendyjperry.com. And then uh, go to the members only page and, and click on that and they can find more information about that. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Time is up. It is, our, uh -huh. it is 30 minutes have gone fast. Uh, it's always good to get with, get uh, connected with you every week and to be able to be of service to our viewers uh, around this topic to be of support. So Wendy, Yes. You have an amazing saying that I love. <laughs> and I, and I started last week saying we've got to end with this. So take it away. All right. Parental alienation can happen to anyone. So it should matter to everyone. Have a great week and we will see you again next Wednesday.